Episode number three, Paris, the City of Dreams. On foot and burdened with his heavy saddle, our young hero, Dog Tanyon, continues his weary journey towards Paris, the city of his dreams. He is going to see his father's old friend, Monsieur Treville, who is the honored captain of His Majesty's personal guards, the Musketeers. In spite of many setbacks, Dog Tanyon's spirits are high as he continues his trudge on foot and contemplates his arrival in the glittering capital of France. Phew. I had no idea that the road to Paris was going to be this long. The saddle gets heavier with every step I take. It feels like there's still a horse attached to it. Hey, what's that? Oh, first traffic I've seen all day. It's nice to have some company on the road. Hey! Oh, did I say nice? <gasps> this is an outrage! That fool sold me to the skin. You driver, stop this coach at once. How do you know manners? It is customary to show some respect for a gentleman. You look more like a kid from the country to me. You do well to watch where you're going. Hmm. You dare insult a gentleman, you peasant? A gentleman? <laughs> I've seen many a gentleman in my day, but believe me, you look more like a court jester. <laughs> Now, get out of my way, for I have urgent business to attend to, and you waste my time with your delusions of grandeur. You cur! You will regret those words for the rest of your life! You're squandering my time with another joke! Move on! Curse you! Apologize or fight me! Huh? What? <laughs> huh? What? <laughs> What's wrong? Huh? <gasps> oh, dear, this is so embarrassing. Uh, may I be of service? <laughs> it looks like you could use a little help yourself. I apologize for my coachman. Now, what's all this quarreling about? It was all my fault. Please. Don't trouble yourself. It's nothing, really. You're simply covered with mud from head uh, to foot. It's the uh, very least uh, I can do for you. Please, don't. Thank you. Please, it was my coachman's fault. You must allow me to do something. I won't hear of it. It's, it's completely unnecessary. Please, don't be offended. I only want to make amends for the inconvenience that we've caused you. I do have one question. Would you be so kind as to tell me how much farther I have to travel before I get to Paris? <laughs> What's so funny? You're in the outskirts of Paris now, monsieur. Huh? I am? Really? Mm-hmm. That's right. You can see it from here. Wow! D'Artagnan was speechless. What a glorious place! He was finally in the city of his dreams, Paris. D'Artagnan was ready to take the big city by storm. He'd been waiting for this day all his life. At last, I made it. I'm really there. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. It's, it's wonderful. <laughs> I feel like my life is just beginning. <sighs> Excuse me. If you don't mind my asking, what brings you to Paris? I have come here to serve His Majesty the King. How impressive. Well, not as his personal servant, but in the corps of guardsmen that serve under the command of Monsieur Treville. So you want to be a musketeer. Are you sure Monsieur Treville will accept you as a guardsman? Oh, sure. Oh. That is to say, I certainly hope that he will. At any rate, Monsieur Treville wrote a letter to my father requesting that I come to Paris. And now, if you'll excuse me, I must hurry. Worry not, coachman. I forgive you for your indiscretion. Hmm. Same to you, peasant. <laughs> hmm? I forgot to return it to her. Maybe I can still catch her. Hey, you, you forgot your handkerchief. Oh, I mean your handkerchief. Mmm, <sighs> the sweet perfume of a truly lovely lady. 
I think I'm in love. Hmm? What am I saying? What an excellent excuse to see her again. But the first thing I must do is call on Monsieur Treville. Paris is even bigger than I thought it was. I've never seen so many people. Identify yourself, now. Is this the barracks of His Majesty's Royal Guardsmen? Yes, but errand boys use the rear entrance. Huh? Errand boy? Haven't you come by to deliver that saddle? This saddle belongs to me. All right, why have you come? To speak with Monsieur Treville. With Captain Treville? Do you have an appointment? No, not exactly. But it is very important, and I must speak with him immediately. Ah, but no one sees him without an appointment. You can see for yourself how many candidates are fighting for an opportunity to see him. Why, half the young men in France are hoping to become musketeers. On garde. You mean that none of those fellows are actually musketeers? No, but each of them hopes to win that honor. <laughs> Hold enough, you win, I give up. You won't find me such an easy victim. Take a good look at them. They are your competition. The one who wins overall will have the honor of speaking with the captain. And if he has a bit of luck and proves his worth, he may get to be a musketeer someday. Yeah? I will let you in on one condition. Compete with those young men, and then you may speak to the captain. Well, that seems fair, but not right now, okay? You mean you're afraid? Certainly not. Nothing frightens me. Hmm. <laughs> Let's see. The first thing I have to do is buy myself a proper sword. Ah, there's a weapon shop now. Mm. <gasps> oh. You need a weapon, sir? Yes, I need a good sturdy sword. In that case, monsieur, you've come to the right place. Please come in. Oh, thank you, sir. <gasps> oh. This is, this is fantastic. I've never seen such a fine array of swords. Oh. Allow me to help you decide which one of these swords you'd like to buy. I don't want just anything. I want a sword worthy of a musketeer. I understand. Aha. Hmm. Here, let me see that. Huh. Uh, huh. How about this one? Hey. This is wonderful. Oh, indeed it is. Uh, Why, any gentleman uh, would be proud uh, to have such a sword as this at his side. Magnificent. I'll take it. How much do you want for it? For you, the price is just 200 louis. Oh, that's frightfully expensive. <sighs> I'll show you another one, then. Now then, where is it? Ah, yes, here we are. This sword is truly stupendous. <laughs> it almost seems to have been made for you. Oh? How much is it? Only 80 louis. Too much. Uh, well, have you made up your mind which one you'd like to have? I want the one that's worth 200. Well, if that's the one you want, why don't you buy it? Sadly, because I don't even have two Louis to my name. What? Well, then why are you wasting my time? Oh, this is deplorable. Or perhaps you thought I was giving swords away. No, of course not. I have money. It's just that this is all that I've got. Too bad, then you can't afford a sword. Ah, uh, but I must have a sword to become a musketeer. Please help me. Will you trade that saddle? No, absolutely not. That saddle was a present from my father. I couldn't. But if you can give me a sword, I'll work for it, okay? What kind of work can you do? Anything. You'll never regret it, I assure you. Hmm. You'll work hard. I swear by my... <coughs> sword. <laughs> never mind. I can see now why you're so desperate for a sword. You have an honest face. All right, I'll let you work for it. Great! When do I start? Now, these are the terms I propose. After all, I'm not in this business for my health, but to make money. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. First, give me what you have. Then you can trade in your old sword for one Louis. Now then, if you're willing to work very hard, do exactly as I tell you, you'll get a sword worth five Louis. Uh, I don't see any swords priced at five Louis. That's because I keep them in the back. 
You may choose any one of these that you like. Hmm. I think I'll take a closer look, okay? Be my guest. They're all magnificent. Ugh, none of these is worthy of a musketeer. You've yet to prove that you're worthy to be a musketeer. Huh. Now follow me. What a shame. No matter, I'll restore it to its former glory. Perfect. Honest, hard-working dog Tanyan. Little does he realize that Juliet, the lovely lady he'd met earlier that day, is almost close enough for him to kiss. Huh? Unless I'm mistaken, that's the gentleman I met on the road. I wonder what he's doing here. I thought he was on his way to become a musketeer, but he's working as a common laborer. Hmm. You've done a very good job. Have I been working long enough to earn the sword you promised me? You have indeed. I must choose carefully. This is a very important decision. Hmm. Uh, have you decided hmm. which one you like best? Hmm. This one doesn't look too bad. It's pure steel. I think I'd better try it before I take it. Pure steel, you say? Looks more like tin. No problem. Yeah. Mm. <sighs> this sword should last you the rest of your life. Oh, well, nobody lives forever. What a city. Wow. Huh. Just think, that beautiful young lady who was so kind to me must live in one of those houses. I wonder which one. I almost forgot about her handkerchief. I must find her and return it immediately. Good afternoon. May I assist you, mademoiselle? Yes. I wish to speak with a young gentleman who works for you. You mean the likable young country boy who just recently arrived in Paris? Yes, that's the one. I'm sorry to disappoint you, but he's no longer in my employ. He only stayed long enough to pay for a sword. Did he happen to mention where he was going? No, I'm afraid he didn't say. But he can't have gone too far. He spent his last louis on the sword. Poor fellow. Oh, poor indeed. He came to me with the intention of buying a sword. I showed him quite a few, but since he had no money, we made an agreement whereby he would work for me in exchange for one. He took one of those over there. Uh, the cheapest swords I make. They're really not very good, as you can see. Oh, my. Those look very bad indeed. But one of these swords is a suitable weapon for a gentleman, monsieur. Well, you must consider the price. Even so. <clears throat> Haven't you any swords of real quality? The price doesn't matter to me. Oh, of course I do. <laughs> I must have walked a hundred miles today. My feet are killing me, and I'm hungry enough to eat this saddle. Welcome, monsieur. I hope you enjoy your stay. Get out of here, you deadbeat peasant. Next time, bring some money. Would you like one? No, thanks. If I don't get something to eat soon, I'm gonna starve to death.
Does everyone have enough of everything? Who's that? Poor dog Tanyon. No friends, no family, all alone in the big city. He made his bed under a tree and settled in for the night with only his lonely thoughts to keep him company. Huh? Hey. <laughs> Uh-oh. What do you want? Who are you? What's your name? My name is Dog Tanyon, sir. I, I stopped here to rest a while. That's tough. You weren't invited. We don't like strangers in our part of town. So get out. Hold it. Why can't I spend the night here, huh? Tell me. Because I say so. Who are you to be giving me orders? I've decided to spend the night here, and I don't intend to move just because some big bully doesn't like it. So you won't budge? We'll see about that. Come on, gang. Let's teach this kid a lesson. Ah. Ah, take that. Oh. Ouch! Well, I can see I'm gonna have to teach you ruffians some manners. So, that does it. Pretty spunky kid. Get him out of here, now! Right, boss. He was a fool to fight us with a ridiculous weapon like this. And we better never catch you hanging around here again, understand? So this is what Paris is really like. I almost wish I'd stayed at home with my family. I could certainly use a hot meal and a warm bed. Oh, well. Chin up, Dog Tanyon. You mustn't let yourself be discouraged by these things. Tomorrow is another day. And in the morning, you will be going to see Monsieur Treville, captain of the Musketeers. Your sword can be repaired, and your honor is still intact. Forge ahead, young man. And never forget that you are a Dog Tanyon. What are you doing here? I, I stop to repair my sword, and then I'll be on my way. Hmm. There now. Uh -oh. One moment. You're new in town. Where are you from, and when did you arrive? Today. I'm from Bern. From Bern? Well, I knew you weren't from Paris. Where are you staying? Nowhere. So you're a vagrant, eh? Well, you'll have to come with me huh? now. Not a chance. Hey, you, come back here. Stop, I say. Halt! You're under arrest! Come back here! Stop running away! Halt in the name of the king! This has certainly been an eventful day. <laughs> what? This is my third bath today. I've been cheated, beaten, and wet all day. Hey, you inconsiderate blockhead. What are you trying to do, huh? Drown me? <gasps> oh, I'm terribly sorry, monsieur. Hey, it's you again. <gasps> I'm Juliet. 
Pleased to meet you. My name is Dog Tan. <laughs> oh, poor Dog Tanyan. You're soaking wet, and once again, it's all my fault. Please forgive me. Ah, oh, think nothing of it, my fair lady. <gasps> Poor Dog Tanyon. I must go to him at once. So Dog Tanyon has found a friend in the big, cold city of his dreams. Although Juliet is not a musketeer, she understands the musketeer's motto. One for all, and all for one. In the next episode, Dog Tanyon accuses Fortos of a series of robberies. As a result, Dog Tanyon takes sides with the Cardinal's guard. Once things are cleared up, Dog Tanyon establishes his first contact with the so-called Three Muska Hounds, Fortos, Athos, and Aramis.